Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina and I make videos about living in my tiny house on wheels and living a more intentional life. I'm not in my tiny house right now. I am uh, by the ocean, which is always very soothing and comforting for me. And I gotta admit, I really love. You can hear the seagulls in the background. which is awesome. Today I wanted to talk about something a little different. I know on this channel that I show you what I love about living in a tiny house. And, you know, I talk a lot about resilience and figuring things out and all of those things. But today I wanna to talk about something a little different. So not every day is a good day. Not for me, not for you, not for anybody. Um, but I always try and remind myself that every day could be worse. And these last few weeks have been a challenge. So I'm just going to tell you about what's been happening in my world. So about three weeks ago, I had three things happen to me fairly close together that really kind of um, knocked me on my butt for a little bit. I think I'm a pretty resilient person. Um, and I'm not the kind of person who spends a lot of time feeling sorry for herself. <laughs> but that was not me three weeks ago, let me tell you. I think that I've mentioned in past videos that I was looking for a little car to buzz around the island with because I didn't want to drive the van as my primary vehicle because obviously it's not very good on gas. So I had bought a little smart car, used 2007, low kilometers, it hadn't been maintained all that well, but it was a really good price. Um, and it was in fairly decent shape. The first thing I did was take it to a garage to have it looked at and the oil changed. And they told me when I picked it up that it was in pretty good shape. There was nothing major that needed to be done. The brakes were good, the tires were good, um, and it was running well. Um, and that down the road, there were some things that they said we would have to address, but for now it was fine safe to drive which was great so not even three days later I'm pick I'm driving to Duncan to do some shopping a Canadian tire and I get a gravel truck go by and a big rock which causes a crack in my windshield not a little crack but like a starburst crack and I'm thinking well fudge not really what I said. I wonder how much a windshield for a smart car costs, but not a big deal, right? Okay, that's an annoyance, frustrating because the windshield was perfect. I do my shopping in this uh, little shopping area just on the edge of town. Busy shopping area, it's got a Home Depot, Canadian Tire, Best Buy. And as I'm coming out of there, the engine revs like crazy and I'm just turning the corner to come out to of the shopping area so that I can get onto the highway to come home and the car stalls right in the intersection right on the corner a big lineup of traffic behind me and it just stalls it will not turn over I have power but it will not turn over so I call I have AMA which is BCAA in BC and the lady on the phone was very sweet she said that I would, it would be two hours before somebody could come and tow me. And I just broke down. <laughs> I just started crying, which is not like me. I'm normally a fairly uh, even uh, person. But you know what it was? It hit me that I didn't have any of my people here. Um, I think I just hit a wall. I realized. The people I would normally call, which would be Keaton, my oldest son, you know, or my friends. People that could help me, who could come get me, who could come look at the vehicle. My garage that I've been at for like 20 years with the mechanics that I trust. Everybody, all of my support network was in Calgary in a different province and nobody was here to call. And that really, really hit me. 
So I was kind of a mess on the phone. I cried <laughs> so much. Um, she was very sweet. So I hung up with her and I'm still sitting in this intersection with my lights flashing. And this truck pulls up behind me, this big truck. And this young lady jumps out, comes to my window and she says, hey, my boyfriend and I can push you around the corner because there was a big merge lane. So at least you'll be out of the intersection which was awesome. So I just started crying again to say thank you. <laughs> so they pulled, pushed me around the corner and I sat there waiting for, I don't know, another 40 minutes crying. <laughs> and then a vehicle pulls up behind me again. And this uh, woman about my age jumps out and she runs to my window and she's like, hey, hon, are you okay? Which was so nice which of course meant I started crying again. And I said, yes, I'm fine. I'm just waiting for a tow truck. So she said, I have booster cables. Uh, I can boost you if you need a boost. And I'm like, no, that's okay. It's not the battery. I have power, but the tow truck's coming, but thank you. <laughs> she was so sweet. So I sat and waited. And uh, yeah, about another 45 minutes later, the tow truck driver arrives. And he's a young guy about Keaton's age. And I'll insert some video of the smart car going up on the ramp. He's so tiny. And um, as I'm standing there watching him, I'm kind of crying, but trying not to. And I get in the truck and he takes me to the nearest uh, garage, which wasn't very far at all. And, he, and they're closed, of course, because now it's like eight o'clock on a, or 7 30 on a Saturday and as he's we get there he's like well how are you getting home <laughs> and of course I live about 18 20 minutes outside of Duncan and Duncan does have a taxi service but it's notoriously unreliable which is what he said <laughs> when I said I guess I'll try and call a cab because when I had been on the, the line with the lady from uh, BCAA and asked her if the tow truck driver could give me a ride home, she said that they're not allowed to give clients ride homes, rides home. He's like, well, yeah, my, you, you can't, like, I don't want to leave you here in the dark now, uh, waiting for a cab that may or may not come. And if they do, it'll be a long time. He's like, where do you live? So I told him and he's like, listen, I'll give you a ride home, <laughs> which of course made me start crying again because apparently i was just weeping wendy on that saturday night oh my gosh so he drove me home uh you know i told him that i had just moved and you know i didn't have anybody that i could call and he gave me a ride home which was awesome and then after i got home he texted me to say that he really, un he understood it's tough when you move to a new place and you don't have any support network, but if I needed any, any help, if I needed to, to find a garage or anybody that he, I was, he was just a text away, which of course made me cry again. <laughs> so that was just such a challenging day. And you know, it just made it, it just sort of brought home to me the fact that um, while I, I'm thrilled to be here and I don't regret the move at all, it's not all happy days and sunshine. Sometimes it's cloudy and sometimes you hit a wall and you, uh, it's brought home to you very directly that you are on your own uh, with no support network close by and the people that you normally count on are thousands of miles away. So that was Saturday. Sunday, uh, the garage was closed, so I couldn't do anything. Monday, <laughs> I wake up, it's cold now. We're having, we were having an unseasonably early cold snap. Uh, it had snowed a little bit and it was chilly, below freezing. Not a lot below freezing, but cold. I'm laying in bed Monday morning and the furnace kicks in and then shuts down right away, which I know is not a good sign. I get up, my furnace is not pumping out heat. The fan is going, but there's no heat. 
So that's a problem. So I call Garrett's Services and I'm gonna put their link down below. They're the uh, people that came and got me all connected to the propane. So they had to source that part. That part came from the US, from New York. And I didn't have heat in my house for just over two weeks, which was not fun. I had space heaters and thank goodness it warmed up and it wasn't Calgary cold. If it had been, this had been in Calgary, this would have been a much bigger deal, but I wasn't worried about it, my pipes freezing or anything like that. But I had to live with just space heaters going for two weeks. And let me tell you, when you wake up in the morning and your house is at 11 degrees Celsius, <laughs> it's not fun. Um, and then you're turning on some space heaters. I can only imagine what my electricity bill is going to be when it comes from those two weeks. But they managed to get that piece. And on Monday of this past week, uh, they came and put it in. And my furnace is now working. And I am eternally grateful for them for being able to find that part uh, for all the time that they spent trying to diagnose the pro problem. And they didn't charge me for all that time. He charged me for the call to come out and replace that unit. And that was it. Uh, and the unit itself, which was really awesome. My point in telling you this story is to sort of say that not every day is a good day. Not every week is a good week. And sometimes you just have to have a good cry. <laughs> but also what I realized was that there are amazing people in this world who are willing to help strangers out. I like those, uh, that young couple that pushed me around the corner when I was stalled and that lady who stopped to ask me if I was okay, which she didn't have to do. And for Garrett's, for uh, that whole team for being so amazing and taking care of me and checking in to make sure I was okay. I realized that while not every day is a good day, every day could be so much worse and there's always something to be grateful for, even when there are challenging times. And I also realized it's okay to have a good cry. You don't always have to be strong. You don't always have to be in control. Um, sometimes you just need to have a good cry, but then what I tell myself is, you gotta put your big girl panties on, suck it up, and just deal with it. So anyways, guys, I just thought I'd share that because I don't want you guys to think that, um, I just, I don't want to, I don't want the channel to be just the good stuff. Don't get me wrong, there's lots of good stuff and I'm very lucky um, and I feel very fortunate to be where I am, living the life that I am. But the fact is, some days suck. And, and I almost said it, stuff goes wrong. And some days I don't feel that strong or that in control. And um, you know what, that's okay. So um, if you're going through times like that, and you feel like you always have to be in control and you always have to be um, uh, strong. Just know it's okay to not be strong all the time. As long as you don't stay there, we all have those days. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're staying safe. Remember in your world where you can be anything, be kind. I really did see the kindness of strangers that day when the car broke down and um, it was a reminder to me that there are a lot of amazing people in this world who do show kindness. So I love you guys. I'll see you next week.